Good morning, Church. Welcome to our prayer encounter. Sa umaga pong ito, sama-sama tayong umawit at magpuri sa ating Diyos. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We continually welcome you, God. We just want to worship you. We just want to give you praise this morning. Lord, Thank you for the assurance that we are safe and we are secured in you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus.
forgiveness of our sins cleanse us with your precious blood and allow us to live in freedom Lord in your presence we lift up our nation Philippines this nation is for you Jesus Lord bless our nation we apply your precious blood that you will pour out your blessing your favor and your power upon our land Lord, salamat din po sa aming Pangulo na si Rodrigo Duterte. Sa po na kayong makasama, grant them the strength and the knowledge to serve your people. Pangunahan niyo po sila sa bawat desisyong gagawin nila. Nang sa gayon, ito'y makabuti sa bawat mamamayan ng bansang ito. Lord, we pray sa mga nanunungkulan from the highest position down to the least na sila'y maging tapat na maglingkod sa bayan na maging pagpapala sa bawat mamamayan ng bansang ito Lord, we pray na patuloy niyong ayusin ang aming bansa Lord, we pray na matapos sa po itong pandemya ang aming kinakaharap We pray that you will grant wisdom to the scientific community that they will be able to discover a cure and a vaccine for COVID-19. Lord, we pray that you will protect our frontliners, the physicians, the nurses, and the rest in the medical field. Lord, maraming salamat po, Panginoon, dahil patuloy niyo pagpapalain na aming bansa, especially our economy. Lord, allow our economy to be excited once more. Lord, bring more investors, businessmen to our land that we will be able to bounce back and receive your provision. Lord, maraming salamat po sa bawat opportunity na ipagkakaloob mo sa mga naglilingkod sa iyo, Panginoon. Lord, maraming salamat po, Panginoon, dahil hindi nyo iaalaw ang spirito ng kahirapan sa aming bansa. Ang korupsyon, ang prostitusyon, ang drug addiction sa pangalan ni Jesus. Lord, I pray sa bawat opisina ng aming bansa from executive, judicial, legislative, kayo hindi po sa, sa Supreme Court, O oh Lord God, that they will be able to function na makakabuti sa mga mamamayan. They will be able to right law na hindi po nakokompromiso ang iyong katuruan at dadaling sa kabutihan kondisyon yung mga tao nyo Lord we pray Panginoon that this law 
will be implemented well for the welfare of your people. Lord, ano mang bagay na nagahad lang para maging pinagpala ang aming bansa. Any civil uh, disturbances and the rebellion, we rebuke them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we allow your will to be done upon our land. Maraming salamat po, O God. Maraming salamat po. Lord, tinataas din po namin ang aming uh, probinsya, ang Pampanga, along with Magalang and the rest of the municipalities, O God. Patuloy niyong pagpalain ito. We speak revival in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Unity and peace and order in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, maraming salamat po sa bawat namumuno, from governors, mayor, even barangay captains, so Lord God, patuloy niyo silang tulungan, bigyan ng karunungan, kalakasan, upang maglingkod na mabuti sa mamamayan, O God. Lord, to the body of Christ, we speak revival, we speak growth, we speak multiplication in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, allow the Holy Spirit to move in the church, the mighty name of Jesus and raise up more pastors cell leaders open more outer chests in the mighty name of Jesus maraming salamat po Panginoon maraming salamat po Lord as we remember our pastor our mentors Pastor Mark Pastor Raguen and the rest of the ordained pastors Lord grant them the strength good health along in size, satisfying lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Allow your double portion of anointing to overflow upon their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, maraming salamat po, Panginoon. Maraming salamat po sa, aming, sa bawat pamilya. Lord, give opportunity that they will receive your salvation sa pangalan ni Jesus. Salamat po sa bawat sa leader na nagtsatsaga na mag-sowin na tabutin yung mga kaluluwang naliligaw. Maraming salamat po sa buhay nila. Pag-ingatan nyo sila. Pagpalayan nyo sila and empower them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, maraming salamat po sa bawat nanunood or nakatune in sa aming Facebook page. Patuloy nyo silang pagpalayan. Pagkalob nyo po yung desire ng mga puso sa pangalan ni Jesus. And allow everyone to grow in faith and let your will be done upon our lives. Maraming salamat po, Lord. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. We often hear the word spiritual revival in prayers, in preachings, and in history books. Charles Feeney, Reinhard Bonke, and a long list of revivalists have greatly contributed in the church history. Spiritual revival, the battle cry of every believer in response for today's national issues or problems. Let's see how one of the revival events happened in the Bible during the time of King Hezekiah. In 2 Chronicles 29, Hezekiah was 25 years old when he became king and reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, daughter of Zechariah. He did what was right in the Lord's sight, just as his ancestor David had done. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the Lord's temple and repaired them. Then he brought in the priests and Levites and gathered them in the eastern public square. He said to them, Hear me, Levites, consecrate yourselves and consecrate the temple of Yahweh, the God of your ancestors. Remove everything impure from the holy place. For our fathers were unfaithful and did what is evil in the sight of the Lord our God. They abandoned him, turned their faces away from the Lord's tabernacle, and turned their backs on him. They also closed the doors of the porch, extinguished the lamps, did not burn incense, and did not offer burnt offerings in the holy place of the God of Israel. Therefore, the wrath of God was on Judah and Jerusalem, and he made them an object of terror, horror, and mockery. As you see with your own eyes, our fathers fell by the sword, and our sons 
our daughters and our wives are in captivity because of it. In verse 10 to 11, it is in my heart now to make a covenant with Yahweh, the God of Israel, so that his burning anger may turn away from us. My sons, don't be negligent now, for the Lord has chosen you to stand in his presence, to serve him, and to be his ministers and burners of incense. Let me jump on verse 31. Hezekiah concluded, Now you are consecrated to the Lord. Come near and bring sacrifices and thanks offering to the Lord's temple. So the congregation brought sacrifices and thank offerings, and all those with willing hearts brought burnt offerings. In verse 36, so the service of the Lord's temple was established. Then Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced over how God had prepared the people, for it had come about suddenly. In the passage, we can see three important factors of spiritual revival that happened under the good king Hezekiah. Spiritual revival comes through commitment and cleansing and expresses itself in celebration. There's commitment, there's cleansing, and it's being expressed in celebration. Number one, spiritual revival comes through commitment to the Lord. King Hezekiah was the son of King Ahaz. He was the previous king. He introduced idol worship while worshiping the God of Israel and ended by closing the doors of the temple, sacrificed to other gods, and established centers of idol worship in every Judean town. In short po, hindi po naging mabuting hari si Haring uh, Ahaz and even sa mata ng Diyos sa kanyang paglilingkod. And because of this, the Lord stirred up enemies against him from every side. The Philistines on west, the Edomites on east, and the most threatening part, Assyrians, was from the north where King Ahaz had tried to buy friendship with. Ang mga Assyrian ay kilalang mga brutal at makapangyarihan ng panahong iyon. Kung aatakihin nila ang Judah, marami ang mawawalan ng buhay. Mawawasak na pamilya, magiging mga alipin, at ang pagsamba ng mga anak ng Diyos ay magiging parte na lamang ng nakaraan. So kapatid, if you were Hezekiah, taking the leadership of a nation under those conditions, what would be your first priority? Ang hirap po yata, no? <laughs> Pero in verse 3, so po yung sinabi niya, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. Kakaupo pa lamang po niya bilang hari. In his first year and in, in his first month, may ginawa na po siya. He opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. Then he calls the priests and Levites and charges them to consecrate themselves first and the house of the Lord second to reverse the awful conditions introduced by his father. Napaka sakla po yata ng kondisyon ni King uh, Hezekiah, no? Ipapamana sa kanya yung trono, yet mamanahin niya pati yung kasalanan, pati yung pangit na kondisyon ng Judah. So kung magkakaanak po kayo, wag naman po sana konsumisyon, utang, uh, sumpa, or kahirapan, or kaguluhan, or yung, yung ipamana natin sa ating mga anak. <laughs> wag po natin gayahin si King uh, Ahaz. Going on, he shares with them what is in his heart. Namely, to make a covenant with the Lord. To make a commitment. And repeat his charge to them, to the priests, to the Levites, to the leaders. That do not be negligent. For the Lord has chosen you to stand before him, to minister to him. So therefore, yung first priority po ni King Hezekiah in the face of the national crisis was to call the nation and its leaders back to the proper commitment to God. Kakaiba po itong si King Hezekiah. Kasi at times po, 
pag may problema po tayo, um, pag, pag merong threat sa security ng isang bansa, normally yung isang leader, anong gagawin niya? Ibubus niya yung, yung national security. Ibubus niya yung mga military and other force na magpropotect sa atin and mag, uh, makikipaglaban para sa atin. But King Hezekiah is different. Ang una niyang ginawa is ni-renew niya yung commitment niya kay God. At matututunan natin sa, sa example ni King Hezekiah that commitment to God is the most pressing or urgent need in a time of pressing or urgent need. Normally po kasi sa isang tao, pag kumakaharap po tayo ng isang krisis, kung ano yung problema, siya yung sinusurusyonan natin. For example po, when we are faced to a health crisis or crisis, the first thing to do is get medical attention. Like we are doing now. Dahil kinakaharap natin yung pandemya ng COVID, we are um, deploying our medical workforce to give medical attention do sa mga afflicted ng COVID. Kung nawalan ka naman ng trabaho, yung first priority mo is to focus on finding a new one. Tama po ba? Pero kakaiba si King Hezekiah, ginawa niya muna or inuna niya is yung commitment niya with the Lord. Now, I'm not saying that we should ignore pressing or urgent problems like uh, health issues, trabaho, or things that really are important. Pero just like what uh, King Hezekiah did, pinakita niya sa atin that the most pressing need in a time of need is to renew our commitment to the Lord. Kasi only after we have done that, we are free to seek His mind on how to deal with the pressing problem. Kaya nga sabi ng Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So kailangan muna nating unahin si Lord. Magkaroon tayo ng commitment with the Lord na patuloy tayong maglilingkod sa Kanya despite our circumstances, despite our situation. Amen? And often the very reason God allowed the problem is to get us to stop and get our priorities back in line. So yun naman po pala, kaya pala, inaalaw ni Lord na magkaroon tayo ng problema, it's because we are so busy. And nothing can seem to stop us. Lahat na lamang ng pwedeng gawin sa mundo ginagawa natin. And God became or become our least priority in life. Kapatid, once we've done that, pag ginawa natin na inuna natin, Si Lord, and we commit ourselves to Him, He often deals with the problem in ways we never could have, even if we had put all our efforts into solving it. I tell you, kapatid, kahit gano'ng karami yung gawin mo, kahit mag-research ka, kahit anong solusyon yung gawin mo, just to solve the problem that we have, it won't make any sense. Mapapagod at mapapagod ka lang. So, the first thing that we need to do is to commit to the Lord. And allow Him to help us, to reveal unto us how we will be able to solve the problem or the circumstances that we have. Next, commitment to God brings hope in, into the darkest of our situations. King Hezekiah could have grown very depressed. His situation was really depressing. Imagine, he was just 25 years old nung uh, umupo siya bilang isang hari. And for sure, wala siyang experience para mamuno sa isang bayan or in a, in, in a nation. So that's really depressing sa end niya. But instead, he committed himself to follow the Lord. He rallied the priests to reopen the temple for worship. He called the nation back to God. And as soon as God breaks into any situation, the darkness is dispelled. By the light of His presence. Amen po ba? Yung quarantine po na ating na-experience uh, in the past, or even up, up until now, for some, it's a negative thing. For some, it's something that they don't want uh, to experience once more. But this quarantine season has a bright side, has a positive side. Because... Quarantine time means 
quality time for the Lord. Amen? Because it, it gets us out of distractions. Things that really uh, going in our way as we seek the Lord, as we commit our Lord in serving Him. So quarantine time is a quality time for the Lord. Amen po ba? Now, it applies to our nation at this time. We see sins abounding, social media rants, issues and corruptions, etc. But if we, as God's people, will commit ourselves fully to Him, there is hope. If God will break into the church and the nation with this light, there is no limit to what He can do or what can happen. Amen? It also applies to you personally, kapatid. Perhaps you're in a hopeless, discouraging situation. You've given every ounce of your effort to trying to deal with it, but all to no avail. But can you think of any problem that is too big for God? Meron bang malaking problema or mahirap na kondisyon na hindi kayang solusyonan ng Panginoon? Kapatid, if God breaks through into your situation, there is hope. The main thing is that we need to renew our commitment to Him. Next, commitment to God always involves a radical commitment to His Word. Radical commitment to God's Word means a commitment that goes against tradition and current custom. Ibig sabihin nun, hindi dapat tayo magpatangay sa agos ng mundong ito. Kung ano yung trending, kung ano yung tama sa mata nila, kung ano yung sikat, kung ano yung uso, hindi dapat yun yung ginagawa natin. Radical commitment to God's Word means complete obedience to what God's Word teaches about how we are to live. Hezekiah understood what the law of Moses prescribed and the commitment to follow that completely. He knew what was clean and unclean. That's in verse 5. He knew what the proper incense offerings and burnt offerings were that had been neglected. That's in verse 7. He had gained this understanding from God's word. Verse 15. Spiritual renewal or revival is always centered on a renewal of the authority of God's word. Now, renewed commitment to God and His word always reveals areas of our lives that have been displeasing to God. So, tinuturuan tayo nito na makita ko ano yung mga bagay na hindi nagbibigay ka kapurihan or ka, nakakalugod sa mata ng Diyos. Nang sige yun, mabago natin ito. Nang sige yun, maisuko natin ito sa Diyos at ma-overcome natin ito. And so, the second element in spiritual revival or renewal is cleansing. In order for revival to happen, Spiritual revival comes through cleansing in accordance with God's word. In verse 12 to 24. Note that renewal or revival always starts with the person and moves outward to the church. In verse 5, consecrate yourselves and consecrate the house of the Lord. Kung gusto mo ng pagbabago kapatid, magsisimula ito sa'yo. Di ba? If you want change to happen, Dapat yung pagbabago mag-start sa sarili mo muna. Sabi nga ni Pastor Mark, if I change, everybody will change. Now, many of these priests sa panahon ni Hezekiah had fallen into unfaithfulness and idolatry. So they had to deal with their own sins before they could begin the process of cleansing the temple. Kapatid, you cannot Give what you don't have. So ang kailangan natin baguhin is yung sarili muna natin na sagyo magkaroon ng pagbabago sa ating bayan, sa ating nation. Now, God can't use you to impact others for Christ until you cleanse yourself from sins. Sabi nga ni Sir JP, uh, ang isang bagay na madumi ay hindi kailanman magagamit ng Diyos. So I tell you, God can't use you to impact others for Christ until you cleanse yourself from sins. Spiritual revival starts with commitment, continues with cleansing, and culminates in celebration, kapatid. Spiritual revival expresses itself in celebration with God's people. Yung po yung nangyari, 
as uh, King Hezekiah uh, did his reform and restore their uh, relationship with the Lord. Now, celebration results from knowing that your sins are forgiven. When the burnt offering began, the songs to the Lord also began with trumpets. That's in verse 27. They had quite a celebration with cymbals, harps, lyres, trumpets, and singing. Kapatid, once we restore our covenant with the Lord, once we allow Him to cleanse us through repentance, once we allow Him to work upon our lives, revival will come. And when revival comes, there is indeed a celebration. Amen po. In conclusion, in verse 36, Then Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced over what God had prepared for the people because the thing came about suddenly. God prepared it, but it happened suddenly. It happened spontaneously na hindi nila namamalayan. Just like how our Savior Jesus Christ was born. Di ba? Suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of angels of heavenly hosts praising God and Jesus was born. In Acts, we read that suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind. And yet, this is what was spoken to the prophet Joel hundreds of years ago. Prepared by God, but it happened suddenly. And God's people rejoice. And God, not Hezekiah, God the glory. Spiritual revival in our nation begins with revival in our hearts. John Wesley said, Give me 100 men who fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God, and I will shake the world. So if you and I want revival, we must commit ourselves completely to the Lord. We must cleanse ourselves of all unrighteousness of the flesh and of the spirit. Allow the Lord to perfect holiness in us and we must join together in corporate celebration of God's abundant grace that extends to all who will draw near to Him. Kapatid, kung gusto mo ng revival, magsisimula ito sa atin. Maraming salamat po. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Truly, you are faithful and you are good upon our lives. Salamat po sa yung salita. Salamat po sa buhay ni King Ezekiah that he became an example as to how we will be able to uh, experience revival sa aming nation. Lord, thank you for reminding us that we need to renew our covenant with you to once more commit our lives upon you. Allow you to cleanse us and we know, O Lord God, that your word will help us to pave way for the revival that we want in our nation. Maraming salamat po, Panginoon, sa araw na to. Hayaan mo patuloy namin ko yung papurihan at sambahin. Karapat dapat kayo. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen.